How does pain medicine find the pain in your body and stop it from producing that unpleasant situation known as pain? Well, it actually doesn't know where the pain is. That's a short answer. It actually kind of blankets your whole body so that your pain levels remain a little bit lower than it would be normally. But let's go into actually what pain medication is. So as long as humans have been alive, we've been looking to try and stop pain from happening in our body with different kinds of pain medication with varying degrees of success. Because pain is bad, right? Well, no, pain is good. Pain is your body taking your brain hostage saying, stop what you're doing, you're doing it wrong. So normally when you're walking around, your brain is in complete control of your body and your surroundings. You're allowed to touch things, you're allowed to do whatever you want and your body doesn't care as long as you don't hurt it. But if you do hurt it, say I'm holding a wrench, I can bring it across my hand, there are no consequences. But if I were to sharply ow, hurt myself or cause pain, my body is telling my brain, stop it. If you don't stop it, we're going to make you miserable for the remainder of your existence. So obviously your body is going to make your brain stop what it's doing. It is an awesome method of self-preservation and not just for humans, for pretty much every living creature. Now, what is actually going on? So obviously I can touch my hand just fine and nothing really happens as far as pain goes. That's because I'm activating the touch sensors in my skin, but I'm not activating the nociceptors. Now the nociceptors are nerves that only activate at a certain point, the nociceptor level. And when I activate them, when I hit that threshold of activation, ow, those nociceptors send signals back to my brain and those signals are not pleasant and they're my body telling my brain that's it you stepped out of line stop what you're doing and we're going to try this again that's what causes pain and pain is good and you don't actually want to stop feeling pain because if you do you wouldn't know if you're actually hurting yourself and you would probably be in a lot of trouble when you get hurt a few things happen kind of a chain reaction starts happening in your body wherever you got hurt. First of all, your nociceptors are activated. They send the electrical signals to your brain saying, ow, 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 please stop. Second, your body produces and releases a bunch of different chemicals in your tissue and in your body. Things like arachidonic acid and those things float in your body and they interact with certain enzymes like COX-1 and COX-2 and they cause the level of activation of those nociceptors to lower dramatically. So say, oh, I don't know, you have a cut or an open wound or a burn on your skin. Once that has happened, even if it's not hurting at that exact moment, if you lightly touch it, suddenly your body is going to say, what are you doing? Don't touch it. It's bad. And that is what causes the pain, even if it is the lightest touch of a feather on an open wound. The initial pain caused by the nociceptors actually isn't bad, but sometimes you want to lower the pain that comes after caused by the lowering of the threshold of pain uh, by these different enzymes and chemicals released in your body. So that's where pain medication comes in. Ibuprofen, aspirin, Tylenol, all of these are different kinds of pain medication. These drugs are part of the NSAIDs, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And what they do is they actually go and fill in the little pores of the enzymes COX-1 and COX-2. And if those pores are filled, then the chemicals your body releases can't get in them and lower your pain threshold. When you take a pain medication, your entire body's enzymes of COX-1 and COX-2 get inhibited. So then your pain threshold can't lower, so your pain doesn't get higher. So that's how the NSAIDs work. Now, uh, the one exception to that is acetaminophen, which is in Tylenol, and that kind of mitigates the effects after the fact. So that's why Tylenol is not an anti-inflammatory, whereas ibuprofen is, because ibuprofen actually stops the reaction from taking place because the union between the different chemicals and your COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes is what causes your pain threshold to lower, but also causes inflammation. So aspirin actually stopped that from ever happening, whereas Tylenol kind of mitigates the effects 
of that union between the chemicals and your enzymes. So that's how basic over-the-counter pain medications work. It is affecting your entire body, not just the location of the pain, but you're probably only going to notice it, the location of the pain, because you still have your nociceptors firing. You can still feel pain, it's just at the same level as normal. But what happens if you just have to stop all pain completely? Well, thankfully you're not allowed to get these outside of a hospital, or at least you really, really shouldn't. But opioids work completely differently than the NSAIDs or Tylenol, because opioids actually stop the pain from registering in your brain. So say you jump into your local aquarium and get bitten by an eel. Your leg is going to be hurting a lot, assuming that's where the eel bit you. So you go to the hospital and Tylenol is not really working because there's a huge amount of pain that just isn't being touched by the normal over-the-counter drugs. Well, if you take an opioid, painkiller, it actually is just inhibiting your brain from recognizing the signals that your body is sending you. So your body is still in a mass amount of shock and sending pain signals to your brain, but your brain is just saying, huh, that's cool, I don't care anymore. And you're just kind of in a sea of numb because your brain isn't recognizing the signals your body is sending you, which is also not good. There are so many other things that we could talk about today with how painkillers work, about why ibuprofen and aspirin work differently and the other side effects, but that's all the time that I have for today. So see you next time. I'm Jonathan Allers for Destructive Creativity. Bye!